Hello, I'm that James guy, and this is my 2020 Chevy Bolt. Yes, you heard that correctly, folks. I now have an EV. Um, I was, if you will recall, an early adopter with EVs back in the day when I made my 20, no, my 1992 Mazda MX-3. I converted it into an EV as a project. Um, I do have a video on that one, which is kind of fun. Um, I'll link to it with a card up, up here. But anyway, I wanted a Chevy Bolt for when they came out right from the beginning. And uh, my wife said you'd never catch me dead in one of those things because they kind of look like a chipmunk or a hamster or something. But anyway, we need a second car. It's going to replace Betty. And this is a weird choice. I know you'll agree this is a really, really weird choice. But uh, anyway, this is, you know what? Here we are in Abbotsford, British Columbia. Murray GM was awesome. Well, of course, because we bought a car off them, they would be awesome. But, uh, you know, looking here, I've got, it's got 52,000 kilometers on it. This is the Gen 2 battery pack from what I know. I think it, if it didn't get the good battery pack, it uh, got recalled with the good battery pack, or so I'm told. And um, yeah, I'm showing, well, it's not fully charged and I'm going hard on the first day I own this car. I'm in Abbotsford, it's like 350 kilometers home to a Suyus, but I have to go all the way into my Delta store and then to my head office. And it shows 344 kilometers worth of range right now. So do you know what? We're going to do some charging maybe along the way. I got to put on like 450 clicks today. So yeah, this is like, for your first day of a proper EV, this is one way to do it, I guess. Just to go hard, first day, let's do it. Let's see what happens. Oh, I forgot to mention, tomorrow I have a 400 kilometer trip to do up to a customer in Armstrong, BC. So that's a lot of kilometers in two days in an EV. And I guess this is just to like say, hey, naysayers, they do actually work. Or this will be to say, sorry, naysayers, but you were right. Anyway, um, what else about the car? 23 grand I got it for, even. That sounds like a lot uh, for my American friends, but that's about right for a car like this. Thank you, EV depreciation, four-year-old car. It's like half price. Anyway, let's start driving and let's just see how this day goes. All right, a little bit of an update. We've reached our first destination. I forgot to hit the, reset the trip. Um, so I'm showing 52.2 kilometers. I think I, I remembered about four or five kilometers in. That'd be about 56 kilometers. Um, one thing, I am not taking it easy with this car. So as most of you know, you want to go speed limit or less with an EV to try and maintain your range, which is really lame. Oh, that's lame. So I'm going hard. 110, I always go 10 over. Uh, cruise control the whole way down the highway, which is not ideal. And even so... I'm showing 314 kilometers left. Would you add 52, that's 360. We've actually gained 20 total kilometers here. So I think now that this car is being used, finally, after sitting on a dealer lot, it's uh, starting to recalculate and, you know, figure itself out. Got a couple meetings and then we'll take off again. Okay, so we're done another leg of the journey. We've done 85 kilometers since I've reset it but my range is showing 320. So when I do the math, that's like over 400 now, or like around 400, maybe 410. So the range is going up. Our total range keeps going up. I think it's because I'm using this thing properly now. Even though I was like 10 over, cruise set, not being all real nice or anything like that. But anyway, here we are at the charger. We're gonna plug it in. It's a Packar charger because I work for a Packard dealer. We're gonna try and uh, charge this thing up. We'll see how long it takes and we'll uh, we'll leave after that. It says it's charging at 14 kilowatts, which is not very quick because this thing is at 80% charge and the top part of the battery is where things take a long time. Okay, it's been half an hour. Hey, the top part of the battery pack does take a long, long time. We are at 90% as you can see on that screen. So I'm just gonna kill it. We are going to kill this charge and just start driving and see what happens.
And we've been on the highway for like maybe 40 minutes and I've been looking at the estimated range and comparing it to what the map says. And they were kind of close going 110 down the highway. But now I fear that the map and the range, they're about 11 kilometers off from each other. We are just about to hit some major elevation gain. I think this goes up to 1,800 meters. Allison Pass, it's it's pretty high. Crew set for 110. It's showing 236 kilometers. I'm about to turn the heater on as well because, you know, we're getting a little, it's not quite as comfortable anymore with just the heated seats on. And once I get to the real steep hill, we'll uh, kind of do a little bit of an update. That's only about five minutes from now. Hey, this is the Hope Slide Hill. Um, it is steep. The display, we're cranking out 70 kilowatts to keep 110. Plus, I got the heater on. So my range is dropping really, really, really fast. So, I mean, for every up, there's a down. So we can recoup that all back in on regen braking after, but it's kind of disheartening when you're looking at the battery level kind of drop quickly. So anyway, next update will be probably hopefully rolling into Princeton if we hopefully make it there for a quick charge. We are at the summit, Allison Pass, and oh boy, I reset my navigation to Princeton. It's not home, but Princeton, where I was originally going to charge with lots of room left, but I'm showing 73 kilometers to go to Princeton and only 84 remaining by range. Now we've gained probably, what, 1,500 meters of elevation and elevation absolutely destroyed this thing. I'm showing just over kind of a quarter tank, battery pack, and uh, I just, uh, I don't know. I'm about to scoot past Manning Park where there's a fast charger and it would probably, I think I can make it to Princeton. There's a big giant hill when you get into Princeton, like a long, long downhill that you would probably recoup a bunch of energy. You will recoup a bunch of energy. But I just, I think I'm gonna do the Manning, the Manning stop. I don't know. Okay, so I actually gave up and I pulled into Manning Park to fast charge, but guess what? I couldn't make any of the chargers work. So we have no choice but to try and make it to Princeton. So 92 kilometers left on the clock. I turned the heater down, oh boy. And it shows 64 remaining into Princeton. So that means there's a bit of a buffer, of course, but uh, we have to go up a massive elevation gain first and then down the other side. So see what happens right we are going down the big hill copper mine hill we did make it 45 clicks on the clock on the range and only 19 to go but we're going down this big hill so this should not be an issue I see a big truck coming up there so this is 8% for three kilometers if you put it in low mode low gear literally you can do one pedal driving I can let off here and basically it's as if I had nailed the brakes, but I'm just regenerative. Regenerative braking. Anywho, gaining battery pack. I did have range anxiety, but that's because this is my first time going down this road this way. Now I know I can do it in winter. It's all good. Hopefully the um, Chevron chargers work. If not, there's some backup BC hydro chargers. Um, Okay, we made it with 100 and, nope, 44 kilometers left. That's cutting a bit short. Uh, heater's on, so you know, whatever. But driving it like a normal car, I did slow down there for a little while because I was getting a little scared. But then on the big downhill back into Princeton, 44 clicks left. That's a bit tight for me, but we're gonna see if this charger works. So let's see if this charger works. Hey, success. We are charging at full blast, 50 kilowatts. This is free at Chevron for a limited time. Just open the app and do your thing. So yeah, a little bit of range anxiety because I'd never done this trip before. It is freezing cold outside. Well, like minus five Celsius. 
all not good things for EV, but at the end of the day, we're good. We're good to go. That was half an hour charging. It charged at 50 kilowatts the whole entire time. And I had the heat on, everything nice and toasty in here. I have 185 kilometers of range and 114 to get home. So this should be no problem. We arrived at home with about 74 kilometers left of range and heater off, it went up to like 87 or something. Lots of juice left. Uh, up to the fast charger, the reason I'm gonna use this charger is because I have such a quick turnaround in the morning. I have to go up to north of Kelowna, which is like 200 kilometers. Uh, if I plugged it in the wall in my garage, that would never happen. But here we go, I have another trick up my sleeve. I'm gonna let this sit here for a couple hours and charge. And then I'm going to take my nine bot Segway electric scooter home. It's about an eight minute walk, about a four minute scooter ride. Oh yeah, we're, all, we're EVing the crap out of this trip. Here we go, going home. We'll see you tomorrow morning. Okay, I'm back. I'm in the garage. I've moved Betty outside. I charged it for an hour and seven minutes. Got it up to 92%. Uh, increased the range back from 87 up to like 345 or something like that which was like a 262 kilometer increase, cost me 11.56 or something. Anyway, I ran the math. Let's say you had a normal car that got six liters per hundred kilometers, which would be like really efficient, you know, normal car. Uh, run the numbers, buck 50 a liter right now. It would have been about 23, 24 bucks. This cost me 11 bucks. So even when you use the public fast chargers, it's significantly cheaper. Um, but what I'm going to do, it's in the garage. I got it up to 92%. The last bit goes really slow, like I said before. But I'm going to finish it off on the 110 volt wall charger. So I'm going to leave it on overnight. There's actually a setting. At what speed do you want to, you know, with the portable cord limit, what do you want to do? You want 8 amps or 12 amps? I'm going to do a 12. My house is new. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we're going to do that. We're going to uh, plug this in. But you know, the other good part is... This car, it was missing. The wall charger was missing. So the dealer was awesome enough. Oh, shut that all off. Isn't that neat? To pull one out of another brand new, I think a Chevy Bolt EUV. This is the upgraded one. It does up to 32 amps, 240 volt. It even comes with the 240 volt dryer plug. So I literally do not have to buy a new charger. I can wire in a 240 volt plug over there where my panel is on the other side of the old Mazda. Um, yeah. So let's, uh, let's see what happens when I plug this thing in. Yoink. Things are clicking. Oh, we got a beep. We got a beep. There's blueness, blue, blue light. And uh, charge will be completed by 2 a.m. And there's a green blinky there. So we're gonna finish this on the wall. This is using my own power outlet. I would have done this had I you know, not had to go out early tomorrow, like 200 kilometers on another trip. I would have just done this. Well, it is tomorrow. Uh, I won't bore you with the whole day, but I left home um, fully charged. It said 335 kilometers of range. Um, that's with, as soon as I turned the heater on, that's what it adjusted to. Been going all day, all the way from Asuyus, all the way up to Armstrong. Now I'm back in Kelowna, just making a quick Costco stop. Is there such thing as a quick Costco stop? Anyway, um, hey, it's, I, there's a flow charger. I'm going to have to top up in Penticton. You can see it's 91 clicks of range. 67 kilometers to go. That's cutting it a bit close, but I'm not worried. There's very little elevation gain. I think we'll be fine. Um, yeah, that'll be the one last kind of quick charge. Then we'll go home and we're gonna charge this thing in the garage till it's full. Well, till 80%, but I'll get to that later. Uh, we'll cut to the part where I'm trying to charge for the very last time at a public DC charger and we'll go from there. Stop, hitting the stop button, hoping it stops. Sounds like it's making clicky noises. So there we go, 20 minutes just to top up. We're up to about 120 kilometers on the clock. 122 uh, cars on, I only have 61 left. 90 kilometers cost like $7.29. Let's keep going home. I'm gonna finish off in the garage. You know the crazy thing about this thing is when I left home it was at 335 kilometers 
and I've put on 339 I put on and I had 33 left. So this thing's very conservative in the way it's calculating range, which is awesome because that means there's always gonna be a little bit of buffer room left. So anyway, next time you see me, we'll be in the garage. We'll do plug it in for the final charge and then we'll wrap this all up finally. Okay, so I plugged it in and I set the max charging to 75%. Um, if you're just gonna not go on long trips, you're just gonna kinda use the car every day. It's best to just only charge to about 75%, maybe 80%. And that way you don't wear your battery out more than you need to. According to that, I set it to 12 amps instead of 8 amp charging from the wall. It's going to take till tomorrow at 10.30 p.m. It's currently 4.48 p.m. So, yeah, it's going to take a long, 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 long time. But it's got a big battery pack because it can go really far. But that's okay. So let's have a conclusion here. We did... How many kilometers? We did like 900 kilometers with an EV in two days. Um, it can be done. Is it the same as a gas car? No. No. Especially with this bolt, it only charges at 40 kilowatts maximum. That is kind of one of the downsides. It's It can only be 40 kilowatts. Compare that to like a newer, you know, Tesla 150, 200. So it can charge quite a bit faster. So like you saw before, I gained like 90 kilometers, but it took 20 minutes. EV land these days, that's not very good. But for today's purposes, hey, we went 450 kilometers and we only had to really spend 20 minutes charging at the Canadian Tire. That's not too bad. Uh, second observation, um, I like the Flow chargers with the Flow app. However, as we saw yesterday in Manning Park, Flow is supposed to, you know, they're a partner with BC Hydro, which is who put the chargers up there in Manning Park. Did not work. So you could be stranded. So the trick is finding a charger that actually works. You know, Tesla is probably a better option if you can afford it, just because you, you know it's probably going to work every time. Whereas with generic DC chargers, you may come up to one and it might not work. So there's always that variable. Today, it was no problem. Yesterday, when I got home, the Flow charger worked here in town. So overall it was okay, but the one in Manning yesterday, it could have been bad. It was cold and had we not made it to Princeton, it would have been really, really bad. But anyway, uh, what else? This car is absolutely a blast to drive. I really like it, but I'm not going to go too far into it. There will be a future review on the car. Um, I'm going to put a lot more miles on it first, just so that, uh, you know, I get a good feel for everything, everything about it. That being said, it was flawless, not a single hiccup. Everything works good. Yeah, I hope this was helpful or at least mildly entertaining. Please like the video, hit the subscribe button, and I will see you next time.